Over the last couple of days, we have been hard at work researching what I believe to be the most accurate list of set piece takers anywhere on the internet for Euro 2024. Guys, we're going to be talking penalty takers, free kick takers and corner takers for every team playing at the Euros. And I'm very excited to share it with you. Welcome to FPL, mate. My name is Dan. Let's get going. So yes guys, as I say, we're going to be going through every team at Euro 2024 to see who the main set piece takers are. So you can use this information for your Euro 2024 fantasy teams, any other fantasy games you're playing, or maybe you're just curious and you want to get all the information ahead of the big tournament. Guys, we're going to be starting off with Germany in Group A, working all the way through. And by the way, a little tip on this guys, if you want to work out which team is playing which team, on this page for example, it's the top two teams will play each other. So Germany Germany play against Scotland and Hungary play against Switzerland in match day one. It's going to be the same on every page just in case you wanted to know who's playing who and you want that reference point. But guys, as I say, we need to start talking about some set piece takers. Let's start off with the Germans. So penalties seems fairly straightforward. It looks like it's going to be Ilkay Gundogan. He has been the main penalty taker recently for Germany. For free kicks, Tony Cruz seems to be the guy. And for corners, it could be Cruz, it could be Kimmich. Gundogan actually playing in the number 10 position for Germany could be a quite interesting pick for your fantasy teams as well. Number 10 on penalties for the host nation. What can go wrong there? For Scotland, I believe it's going to be Christie taking the penalties. McGinn has also taken some recently, so maybe he's going to be back up for Christie, but it seems whenever Christie's on the pitch, he is the main man there. Robertson and Christie should be sharing free kick duties, and Robertson, McGinn, maybe Christie in there as well on corners as well. For Hungary, it's all about Dominic Soberslai. Liverpool fans will know all about this player, but honestly, he is just the set piece extraordinaire for his team, the star man for his team and a lot of people actually tipping Hungary to be hungry for some action in the Euros, possibly finishing second in this group according to a lot of predictions that I've seen, so getting the main man and main uh, set piece taker, penalty taker, everything uh, in this team could be pretty nice 7 million midfielder, I actually think that's a pretty good bargain. For Switzerland, it's all about the 5 foot 5 legend Shakiri. yes guys, he is still around. It seems like a long time ago he was playing for Liverpool, but he is now ripping up the MLS. Uh, and guys, he is definitely not a washed player, especially when we're considering how, how he performs for Switzerland. He is still very much a star man for that team, and he is taking penalties, free kicks, corners whenever he is on the pitch, and he usually is, to be fair, as well. So at 6.5 million, could actually be a little bit of a bargain player there. Granit Xhaka, another player who could take some free kicks and corners, but it's mostly going to be Shakiri. Uh, again, looking at penalties, Shakiri the main man, as we said, but I'm not really sure who else is going to be taking penalties if Shakiri is not on the pitch. There is potential for the the likes of Granite Shaka to maybe take a penalty, uh, maybe Rodriguez, but these players have missed penalties in the past for Switzerland. So I actually think it's more likely that we might see maybe Fabian Cher take a penalty for Switzerland. Could be. On to Group B, and it's Rodri taking penalties. He actually took two penalties in one game recently. I believe that was against Brazil. Uh, anyway, Rodri, you may have seen him in a lot of people's Euro Fantasy teams already. This is one of the many reasons why, as long as Rodri can be that penalty taker, he can also get uh, extra points for ball recoveries, you know, think interceptions and uh, tackles, those kind of things are going to get him FPL points, FPL points, fantasy points, uh, but also, you know, we've got the man of the match points as well, and, and Rodri is definitely, I would say definitely Spain's best player. I'm going to put that opinion out there, Rodri, Spain's best player, uh, sue me. Uh, in terms of free kicks, Grimaldo it seems to be the main guy, and on corners as well, with Olmo offering a right-footed alternative for Spain. Grimaldo is a really really interesting pick in fantasy because he's just a 5 million defender. The one concern is that does he suit being in a flat back four for Spain? Could Kukurea maybe do a slightly better job in there, tactically speaking? So I don't think Grimaldo is 100% nailed on, but he looks like a really interesting pick if he does get minutes. For Croatia, Luka Modric is still the main man. How old is Modric at this point? He must be 38, 39 years old. It seems like he's been around for absolutely forever, but coming off the back of another season for Real Madrid where he was a very important player in that team once again and he is going to be now the main man in a Croatia team that seemed to do pretty well in these international tournaments. 7.5 million midfielder is Modric. Kramaric could also take penalties here as well. Uh, we have actually seen Kramaric take a penalty whilst Modric has been on the pitch recently but I think Modric is probably still the 
long-term main penalty taker for the team. Modric and per Perisic are going to be the guys sharing free kick and corner duties, however. And it might be the Euros, but Italy have their own Brazilian Jorginho on the penalties once again. In fact, recently, it has seemed that it's often the striker who takes a penalty for Italy, uh, whether that is Immobile or someone else, Belotti perhaps, but neither of those players have been included in the squad. So I do think that Jorginho, it's going to be back to him taking the penalties, despite the fact he has actually missed a couple from Italy. But overall, certainly at club level, Jorginho's penalty taking record is very, very impressive. So I think at 5 million, could be a nice little bargain there uh, in this Group B. First fixture against Albania as well. It's not too bad. In terms of free kicks and corners, DeMarco with the left footers, Barella with the right footers. That seems to be the case. And DeMarco at 5 million looks like a really nice bargain, similar to Grimaldo at Spain. A DeMarco, 5 million defender, attacking, on set pieces. That's the kind of thing we like the look of when we're picking our fantasy options. And for Albania, uh, Broja is not in the game. Yeah, he's not in the he's not in fan, the Euro fantasy game yet. They've not added him yet. I don't know why. Uh, I think he'll probably be around six million. But uh, he, I think, will be the main penalty taker if he is starting. If he's not starting and uh, Sikaleshi is starting instead, then Sikaleshi will probably take the penalties instead. But it'll be one of these guys, depending on who is on the pitch. In terms of free kicks, uh, Bajrami Asani. In terms of corners, Bajrami Asani. Group C contains uh, the Slovenian penalty taker Sesko. Seven million, not a bad price for him. But I think on. Honestly, given the other options in the forward positions, it's going to be difficult to justify picking up a Sesco in this reasonably difficult group. Free kicks looks like it's going to be Serin as with corners as well. He's just 5 million, but again, this difficult group is not going to lend itself really to picking Slovenian players for our fantasy teams. Denmark is all about Christian Eriksen. I mean, we kind of know this by now. <laughs> He's just the main man when it comes to everything. He is Denmark's Sobberslai, or maybe Sobberslai is Hungary's Ericsson. I don't know. You can make your mind up on that one. Ericsson's been around a little bit longer. So perhaps we call him the main man of the main men in the Denmark team. He'll be on everything. For Serbia, Mitrovic is your penalty man. And free kicks and corners are going to go to Tadic and Kostic. And England is a difficult one. Well, Kane will be on penalties. You know, Kane loves a penalty. A little bit of stat padding in the international tournaments. Hey, why not? We love to see it from Harry Kane. And I think he's going to be a super, super important uh, fantasy asset as well. Odds for, second odds on for a uh, top scorer in the tournament, by the way, guys. Mbappe is the only player predicted to score more more goals in the tournament than Harry Kane. In terms of free kicks, it's probably going to be Alexander-Arnold or Trippier if they're on the pitch, but I don't think either of those two players are guarantees to be players on the pitch. Outside of that, it gets a little bit more difficult, and it'd be difficult to predict who will be taking free kicks. In terms of corners, again, Alexander-Arnold, Trippier if they're on the pitch, but we could see the likes of Foden, possibly Saka take corners as well. I know I am English, so I should know the England uh, set piece takers more than any other team on this list. But actually, it's a little bit confusing because we're not 100% sure what the England lineup is going to look like. And a lot of those set piece takers are players that kind of are on the peripherals of the team, I guess. For Poland, it's about Lewandowski. Uh, they're by far their best player that uh, I've certainly seen in any Poland team over the last two decades. He's probably the best Polish player of all time time, you would say. Polish people, let me know if there's any ever been a better football player than Lewandowski for your nation. But he is going to be on penalties. He is going to be on free kicks as well. He won't be on corners, however, because he'll be in the box ready to head the corner crosses in the back of the net. And the corners are instead going to go to the likes of Zielinski and Zalewski. And guys, Yes, you have read this correctly. Uh, the penalty taker for the Netherlands has been confirmed as Virgil van Dijk. And we are sporting a uh, Netherlands shirt today, guys. We've got to get those European nation football shirts in the collection. Uh, but guys... Van Dyke, 6 million. If you are willing to spend this much money on a defender for your fantasy team, well, you could get a penalty taking defender as well. That's not too bad, really, is it? We quite like the look at that. In terms of free kicks, Cody Gagpo is probably going to be the free kick taker. Veerman possibly there as well. Veerman and Simmons potentially on corners in addition to that. For Austria, kind of a little bit difficult because they've had a whole bunch of different penalty takers recently. But I was kind of working out when the penalties have been taken, who has been on the pitch at that time. Like I said, we put a lot of research into this video to try and make sure we are getting the most accurate information you can find anywhere on the internet. And Baumgartner seems to be the guy most likely to be on penalties 
if he is on the pitch. Savitzer coming in second there, but we also did see Gregorich take a penalty recently when a couple of the other players were on the pitch, but he was on for a hat trick at that point. So you wonder if uh, Gregorich took a penalty because that was his third goal to get the hat trick. So you do wonder a little bit about that, but Baumgartner seems to be the main guy there. Sabitza so and Vimmer on free kicks, Sabitza so and Vimmer on corners. And for France, Kylian Mbappe is going to be the penalty merchant of that particular team. He is, like we mentioned earlier, the predicted number one top scorer of the tournament. France, obviously, one of the favourites for the whole tournament as well. So we're expecting Mbappe to do very, very well in the tournament, as well as having penalties. It's a great thing indeed. But do not underestimate Griezmann, because France Griezmann is, uh, I don't know, it's the equivalent of Messi at Argentina or Ronaldo at Portugal. Griezmann is just... Mr. France. He really, really is. Um, please don't shoot me, Messi and Ronaldo fans. Obviously, those two players are above Griezmann. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just making the point that Griezmann is just that guy for uh, France. Comparisons have been made in the past that, you know, uh, Barcelona had Messi, Real Madrid had Ronaldo, and Atleti had Griezmann. So it's kind of a little bit of a comparison there, but maybe on a slightly lower level there. But he'll be the free kick taker and the corner taker for France. And by the way, guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you do drop a like, do subscribe as well for more Fantasy Euro 2024 content coming at you pretty much every day at the moment, guys. So, yes, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on to get the best tips to improve your rank and beat all of your mates. Okay, we've just spoken about Griezmann being an absolute beast for France. Well, how about Lukaku for Belgium? And I'm not even exaggerating when I say Lukaku's record for Belgium is like the equivalent of, like, Ronaldo for Portugal. Like, he turned Turns it on to an insane level. Lukaku, when he pulls on the Red Devil shirt, he just becomes an absolute machine of goal scoring. And his record speaks for itself. And he'll be looking to add a few more to his record in the Euros. His form is still good for Belgium. It seems consistently very, very good indeed. And I think he might score a few goals during the group stages, given that Belgium do have a fairly favourable group where they will be predicted to finish the group in the top spot, despite despite some disappointment from Belgium in other recent tournaments. So Lukaku is your penalty man, and he's also a fantastic goal scorer. 9 million, I do genuinely think, is an absolute bargain for him. I love this pick so, so much. Uh, for free kicks and corners, Kevin De Bruyne, the creative mastermind. And I tell you what, Lukaku... Getting goals is very much helped by having an elite creator like De Bruyne, possibly the best creative player in world football behind you, feeding those balls in for you. Obviously, you're going to have more chances to score goals, and maybe that has really helped Lukaku become the international beast that he really, really is. For Slovakia, it's all about the dude, Duda. I don't think anyone actually calls him the dude, but... We're going to call him the dude from now on for the rest of the Euro. So the dude himself, six million midfielder, penalty taker, free kick takers. Uh, English football fans, you might remember him for his time at uh, Norwich, potentially. Uh, but yeah, he's still very much one of the main men at Slovakia. So uh, he will be taking penalties. He'll be taking free kicks. Uh, Benes also could take some free kicks and some corners. Haraslin, another potential corner taker there. Romania is a really interesting one because uh, there is a lot of players that I had to do research on for the sake of this video and for the sake of future videos as well. But what I found in general is that actually, even though there is, uh, yeah, they're, they're not going to be considered one of the favourites for the tournament, let's be totally honest, but given the fact that they have a reasonable favourable group where they will fancy their chances of making second in this group, could be a little bit of a surprise uh, exit from the groups, or, well, entry into the round of 16 stages, I suppose. Cheap players. Could there be some bargains here? Well, Marine could be one of them because he's a 5.5 million mid, uh, midfielder who is on penalties and also some corners as well. For free kicks, it's going to be about Stansiu. Uh, he'll possibly be on some corners as well. For Ukraine, uh, Siganov is the guy. Now, he is a right winger. He is listed as a 6 million forward in Euro Fantasy. And I don't know how I feel about this one because I wish he was listed as a midfielder because, honestly, he looks like he could be an insane fantasy asset to own. A real nice differential. I do want to speak about in more detail in a future video, actually, when we talk about kind of those players that not too many people will have heard of, you know, those bargain players, those kind of different to usual 
Liverpool players, Siganov is definitely going to be one of those guys. And he's coming off the back of a good season with Girona, and uh, he's going to be taking penalties, free kicks, and corners for Ukraine. Uh, Dovbik is going to be another potential penalty taker there, and Mudrik could take some of the free kicks and corners as well. Hungary have Soberslai, Denmark have Eriksson, and well, Turkey have Kanaloglu. I think I've said that right. Kalanoglu, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And by the way, guys, fully expect me to butcher a lot of names during the Euros. These are not uh, names I'm used to saying very often. Usually we're covering Premier League players. So uh, we have, we're a bit out of our comfort zone, but hopefully you guys can help me out with some pronunciations if I get anything wrong. But Kalanoglu, a 6.5 million midfielder, taking all of the set pieces for Turkey in a pretty decent group and a nice opening fixture against Georgia. Hey, this could be an interesting pun. I know a lot of people are going for Arda Gula for their Turkish player, but just for 0.5 million more, uh, Kalanoglu could be a real, real nice uh, pick for the tournament. And now it's time for Georgia, the Peaches State. Actually, it's it's not a state. It's 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 a it's a country in Eastern Europe and uh, a country that is making a surprise inclusion in this tournament. Uh, a little bit to do with the fact that they have got many many great players coming into their team. A real golden generation of Georgian football, which is really really great to see. Um, Mikhail. Tadzi, oh my word, I, I'm going to butcher these Georgian names. Honestly, guys, uh, I've been dreading speaking about Georgia as a nation in the Euros because I really struggle with these names. But we're going to try anyway. Uh, Mikhail Tadze, uh, 5 million forward, is likely to be the penalty taker. Kavara is going to be uh, another potential penalty taker. But honestly, Kavara has missed a couple of, uh, of penalties or at least one penalty for Georgia, which is why I don't think he's going to be the first choice necessarily. Uh, Mikhail Tadze is is kind of a more uh, reliable penalty taker who scored a lot throughout his club career as well. Really good record, actually. Uh, in terms of free kicks, Kavara, uh, corners, Kavara again, and Chak Vetadze uh, is going to be uh, another potential corner taker there. But that, that's actually a little bit to say on uh, Chak Vetadze. Chak Vertadze, so we're going to get there. Chak Vertadze, there's a little bit to be said about him because he's a 4.5 million midfielder. So he's really, really cheap at 4.5. He plays as a number 10 for Georgia, obviously on some corners. And actually, his uh, kind of uh, attacking return, you know, goals and assists, his record is actually not too bad. A real nice creative player in that Georgia team. So if you do feel like Georgia could be a surprise package in this tournament and you just need a super cheap player for your team to enable you to spend more money on other areas of your pitch. Well, this guy is, yeah, you know, he actually could be a decent shout. He's one of the better super cheap players available to us. Krista Ronaldo Sui, a Ronaldo 10 million forward on penalties, on free kicks, and I think he probably starts for Portugal. We don't know that for a fact. Obviously, we saw it in the World Cup that he wasn't perhaps as nailed on as uh, he perhaps had to be. He was really uh, good in qualifying, but recent form, maybe not as good uh, for Ronaldo. Although, if I'm totally honest with you guys, I don't want to say any more on that topic because I know the Ronaldo fans are very passionate about their shared enthusiasm for the Portuguese attacker. So uh, yeah, I'll let you make your own minds up on that. I will present the stats and nothing else. But should be on penalties, should be on free kicks. And uh, Bruno Fernandes is going to be the backup in that regard, potentially taking some penalties and free kicks in Ronaldo's absence. Fernandes also going to be the corner taker for the team. And Fernandes actually coming into the tournament with a really good form for Portugal. And I actually think he's going to be a fantastic and probably underrated uh, fan fantasy pick over the course of the tournament. So yeah, definitely a player to consider. And the final team for today's video is the Czech Republic. Czechia, uh, I know we're using different names at the moment. I think Czechia is the name of the country. Uh, the, the football team is still known as the Czech Republic at the moment for some reason. I don't know if that's right. Any Czech people out there can correct me. I would love to hear from you a little bit there. But Thomas Salšek is going to be the penalty taker. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a surprise there. Willany is going to be the other potential penalty taker there. He's a 7 million forward for free kicks Barak and Cherny gonna be uh, again uh, free kick takers corner takers could be Lozeg Cherny again yeah there's a, a variety of different ways things could go for the Czech Republic one of the more difficult teams to figure out who's gonna be taking the free kicks and corners and of course guys if there's anything you feel that I've got wrong in this video we've done our best we've put a lot of research in but if you feel like you know you are a fan of one of these nations and you think I've got anything wrong in this video please 
do let me know because we want to get the best information possible ahead of the tournament and there's nothing better than sharing our information together pooling that information that would be pretty decent guys so yes those are all of the set piece takers for Euro 2024. Crazy. Like I said, a lot of work did go into this video. So if you did enjoy it, make sure you do drop a like and subscribe. Follow for more Euro Fantasy content coming to your mobile devices and your computer screens every single day, pretty much. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to help you all boost your ranks. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. Check out another video if you would like to on Euro Fantasy. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.